नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल क्यूबिड एजुकेशनल सर्विसेस वी आर सॉल्विंग द फिजिक्स एम सी क्यूज फ्रॉम एस आर एफ टू टेस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वी हैव ऑलरेडी सॉल्व सेवन ऑफ देम एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज क्वेश्चन नंबर एट दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन द बोर मॉडल ऑफ द एट लेट इज रीड द स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट एन इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑफ मास एम ई हैज अ स्पीड यू एन इन द एंथ बोर ऑर्बिट ऑफ अ हाइड्रोजन एटम the normalized speed upper case vn is given as vn is equal to un by c which is 1 over 685 and the mass of the electron in the units of energy is given as upper case me equal to me into c squared and they have already given us the value 0.51 into 10 to the power 6 electron volt where c is the speed of light or velocity of light in vacuum it is given that e squared upon 2 epsilon not hc is 1 over 137 the planck's constant h is given as 4.13 into 10 raised to negative 15 electron volt second the electron makes a transition from the nth orbit to so that is nth orbit to the ground state of the atom n equal to 1 what is the frequency of the emitted photon so it looks like a uh, lot of data has been given but the problem is actually very simple if you understand what what, what needs to be done correct uh, <coughs> they want us to determine the frequency of the emitted photon when an electron makes a transition from the nth orbit to the ground state ground state means n equal to 1 correct so from the bohr model we know that if this is the nth orbit and if this is the first orbit and if an electron makes a transition from the nth stab stable state to the ground state then it is going to emit a photon of energy h nu we have been asked to determine the frequency nu of this emitted photon the first thing that we should be finding here is what is the orbit from which the electron is being uh, it is jumping from that to the ground state okay so that n needs to be found out first and then we can use that value of n to calculate the energy difference between n equal to n and whatever value that we get and n equal to 1 and hence we can find the frequency correct if you look at the options if you look at the options all of them are very close to 3 3.29 3.16 2.93 well this is a bit far away from 3 but uh, this could be an indicator that we cannot approximate things okay sometimes if it is 20 upon 19 or 19 upon 20 we may tend to approximate it as one during our calculations but we cannot do it for this particular problem okay fine so we will start let us first uh, write down the formula that we derive using the bohr postulates for the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom in the nth stable orbit so en is negative 13.6 upon n squared electron volt okay this is a well known formula number 2 number 2 let us now also write down the formula for the speed or velocity of the electron in the nth stable orbit that is un we know that un varies inversely with n so 1 upon n into e squared upon 4 pi epsilon not into 2 pi by h or h upon 2 pi in the denominator so you should know this formula if you know this uh, formula only then you can solve the problem quickly you obviously you will not be having enough time to derive this formula from the centripetal force and other things correct so our first objective as i said earlier is to determine n and the second formula that i have written here is going to help us in finding the value of n correct what they have given us is they have given vn which is un upon c vn the normalized speed it is un upon c and they have given us this value how much is that 1 upon 685 okay un upon c is 1 upon 685 1 upon 685 okay now uh, in this formula 2 pi will go 4 pi will go and 2 will come in the denominator so it's 1 upon n into e squared upon 2 epsilon not h and let us not forget that we are dividing un by c 
so that C will again come or needs to be written here. Okay, fine. Now, if you read the problem carefully, again, you will find that or you will realize that the value of this uh, constant has also been given in the problem e squared upon 2 epsilon naught hc. Okay, where is it? Okay, it is this one e squared upon 2 epsilon naught hc, this value. How much is that? That is 1 upon 137. So this is uh, 1 upon 137. Therefore, 685, therefore 685 must be equal to n into 137, right? This 685, which is on one side in the denominator, and on the other side, we have n into 137. So n must be the division of 685 by 137 and if you do it, it will be 5. You can check it, 7 into 5, 35, 5 here, carry over 3, 13 into 5, 65 plus 3 is 68. Which means electron is jumping from the fifth orbit to the first orbit. Okay, so that is a very simple calculation provided you know the formula. Now let us uh, calculate the energy emitted in this transition. Energy emitted in this transition, how much will it be? It will be negative 13.6 into 1 upon 25 minus 1 upon 1. Now how did I get this? It is from this first formula, negative 13.6 upon n squared electron volt. Okay. Uh, if 1 upon 25 that will give us the initial energy this one that will give us the final energy in electron volts okay so it is negative 13.6 into now let us absorb this negative sign inside okay that will be better if we absorb it inside then I will get 1 minus 1 upon 25 which will be 24 upon 25 okay this is an electron volt but what is E or this delta E rather okay this delta E is actually H nu Okay, so the energy of the photon that will be emitted is delta E, the energy difference between the two energy levels and that must be equated to H nu. So what is nu? The frequency that we want to calculate. The frequency will be delta E upon H. Now what is delta E? It is 13.6 into 24 upon 25 into. Now we need to multiply the denominator by the value of the Planck's constant. Which one? This one. 4.13 into 10 raised to negative 15 electron volt second. 4.13 into 10 raised to negative 15 electron volt second. Now, there is absolutely no need to worry about the units because uh, delta E is already being measured or has been measured in electron volt. So, electron volt upon electron volt second, we are going to get per second, right? Per second, and that is basically the SI unit of frequency hertz. Alright, so uh, it's 24 by 25 into 13.6 upon 4.13 into 10 to the power 15. Now, if you approximate this as 24 by 25 as 1 and 13.6 uh, upon 4.13 as 3 because 4.13 into 3 is uh, how much? 12 point, mm, okay let us check it. 12.39 around that so if you uh, have try to uh, approximate it as 3 then as I said earlier you, you will not be able to decide which of the options is true because all of them are very close to 3 as I said at the beginning okay all these options okay forget about the power 10 raised to 15 that is there in the denominator or this one okay so have to either calculate it uh, by multiplying 25 by 4 so that that will be 100 and then do whatever division you want to or you can rather I can use a calculator so I'm going to do that now okay so let me do it 24 into 13.6 divided by 25 into 4.13 how much is that that is 3.1612. Let's take the first two digits after after the decimal point. 3.16. 3.16 into 10 raised to 15 hertz. And do we have that option? Yes, that is option P. 
you will you may find this problem intimidating for the very reason that they have slightly twisted the things but if you read it carefully and write down the data and try to connect it with the equations available to us in particular the equation for the uh, speed of electron in the n stable orbit and the energy energy equation is already known to most of you and try to modify it the the rest of the steps are very easy and there is one more thing the calculation part if the on screen calculator is available you can definitely or you should rather definitely make use of it i have a separate video uh, made on how to handle that on screen calculator with the correct syntax you can check it out and uh, well that's it that is the solution to question number 8